Okay, welcome to Python for Java Coders. This is lesson nine. Uh, I've been at it for two hours now, and this is the last one I'm going to do today for sure. So in this lesson, we're going to take a look at how uh, functions or methods, whatever you want to call them, work in Java versus in Python. Okay, so let's get started. Again, Java, you need class structure. Python, you do not. So we're going to make a method called printPy. So in this case, I am calling the method. Okay. Again, notice camel casing versus snake casing. So then if I scroll down here, you'll see I've got this method public static void print pi system out print lin 3.14159. So in Python, the equivalent code would be the following. Def means define print pi parentheses colon because we always use colons and after colon you're always going to see an indent okay so you can see this which is part of the function which is part is not and print 3.14159 oops and it's a number so i don't need to put it in quotation marks although i could so let's go ahead and run this and let's see if it works okay very interesting okay at this point you think wow that's kind of weird the print pi method's been defined. I've called it, but it says that it's not defined. Okay, so here's a little bit of a difference. In Python, you've got to define your functions first before you can call them. Now in Java, I guess because it's pre-compiled into bytecode, it reads the whole thing and it knows that you're going to have this method eventually. Uh, but Python's an interpreted language, so you see little things like that, little differences pop up. So let's go ahead and run that, make sure it's working. Okay, very good. Now notice, in Java, I had to declare this as a static method, because it's not attached to an object. Python, I didn't have to do that. I had to declare the return type, void in this case, because there's no return. Didn't have to do that. And here's the same thing, there's nothing in the parentheses, so I didn't have to put anything there. Let's move on. Next, next function is print, let's see, I'll put this, oops, old habits, call functions, and up here I'll call this define functions, and functions or methods you can use interchangeably. So the next one is print double two, oops. okay, so let's go find print double. Okay, so here's our definition, our of our method. So again, don't have to worry about public, don't have to worry about static, don't have to worry about void, don't worry about anything like that. Just go ahead and print double. And now in this case, it's using x because we are sending a value. Of course, here we had to declare it as an int. Here we don't. And then I can go print x times 2. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and run that. And what did I do wrong? Uh, Print double, ah, forgot the def. And go ahead and run that. And there is the answer, which, which matches up with what we have here. Now here's something interesting, two interesting things about Python. Um, I can send anything to that because there is no strict typing. If I want to send, you know, my name, uh, well, my nickname will say Tokyo EdTech, I can send that. Let's go ahead and run that. And this is another interesting Python thing I didn't talk about in the uh, string video, but if you multiply a string, it just prints it out twice. Now, how cool is that? Uh, that comes in handy in a lot of situations. Okay, so if I'm going to put that back to a... Now, if I, again, if I put that as a string, I want to see 2, 2. Okay, but, the, but what I want to see is 2 times 2 is 4. Interesting. Next one. Okay, is get pi. Alrighty, this is an interesting one. So let's say def get pi. Again, look at the, the uh, snake casing. And this is just going to return 3.14159. Again, I don't have to. Where's that? Print get pi. I don't have to declare it static, don't have to say I'm returning a double. I just do it. Okay, so here I'm going to go ahead and to match this, I'm going to say p 
pi equals get pi and print pi. So I did not need to declare that at all because it knows that I'm returning a double. Okay, this is going to be a double now. If I had returned a string, it would be a string. Next up, greatest equals get greatest. Okay, so this is where it's getting a little more interesting. Get greatest. And uh, let's go find the, the definition down here. Oh, I should have done get that one, missed that one. Let's, yeah, get that one. Let's go ahead and do that one. Get double. So in these functions, or in these methods, here I was not sending a value and not returning a value. Here I was sending a value and not returning a value. Here I was not sending a value but returning a value. And in this last example, I'm going to be sending a value and returning a value. So get double. So I think I used x, get double, yeah, x. Again, I don't have to declare it as an int. I'm just going to return x times 2. Then when I call it down here, I'll say y equals get double 4. And then we'll go ahead and print y, which should give us 8. Okay, so far so good. And our next one is get greatest. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and define that. Define get greatest. And this is just an example to show you that we can send more than one value. Again, in Java, you need to declare it. In Python, you do not. Colon, and then if, again, the parentheses are optional. You can have them, you do not have them. So you return x, else return y. Again, parallel structure, but you don't need the, the braces or the semicolons. So I'm going to go down to here and actually try and call this method a little bit. So I'm going to say greatest equals get greatest. We got 42 and 16. And I'm going to go ahead and print greatest. And of course, it should print. 42, the answer to life, the universe, and everything. And the last one. Okay, so in this case, we're actually going to be returning a Boolean instead. And again, the function definition goes before the function call. So I'm going to say define is even using my snake casing, x. And if percent, oops, x percent 2 equals 0, again, two equal signs. Return true, true is capitalized, else, oops, forgot the colon, return false, capital letters. And in my calling part here, I'm going to go ahead and make a little if statement. So if is even 42, colon. And again, I don't need, I didn't need these extra parentheses. I could have just done this. Whatever you think makes it look nicer. Um, print even. And otherwise, of course, we've got two options. Print oops, odd, not dot. Let's go ahead and run that. And we should see even at the bottom. So it takes a little bit of time sometimes because we're dealing with a remote server. So maybe they get busy. And it is even. Let's go ahead and just try a different number. Let's try 43 just to test it, make sure our code's working correctly. And odd, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna put that back to 42 though, because that's a better number. So you can see here, um, with the difference between, a couple of differences between Java and Python. Python, you need to declare the function ahead of time before you call it. We don't need to declare whether it's static or non-static. It's done, it's done a different way in Python. We don't need to declare whether it is the return type is void or double or int or boolean. It's just automatic. We don't have to declare the values that we send, the type, uh, as integers or whatever. We just send them and hope that we send the right thing. Now, the advantage of the Java way of doing it is that when you compile it, it catches a lot of errors. Okay, so for example, if I had done this, it would catch that error. It would say, oh, you're trying to send a string. 
even though it's looking for an integer and it won't let you run that program. It won't let you run it until you correct that issue. That's the advantage of doing it the Java way. Um, it's also much, much faster. Uh, the Java code is faster than Python code, generally speaking. So it's one of the, it's an advantage, but as a programmer, you have to take care of a few more details. So you have to, you have to think about what's the trade-off uh, for you as a coder or for you as trying to solve a particular problem. And yeah, so when you're declaring a, a function or a method here, you say public, you have to declare if it's public or private. Python, it's actually very, very different. Java's really strict with that. Um, I'll just show you a quick example to give you an idea. Uh, if I do private here, um, the equivalent in Python, I think, is you do one underscore <laughs> before and after. I can't remember if it's pr that's private or if it's two underscores, one's protected. I, I forget the actual uh, rule on that. I should, I should have looked it up before I did the video. I'm sorry. But anyway, uh, you don't actually use public and private. You use underscores to indicate whether it's public, private, or protected. And even if it is private, you can just ignore it, which is kind of cool, uh, which is, I think, kind of cool. But it's, it's probably bad programming practice for large programs especially. So there you have it. That is lesson nine. I have, I have uh, done this in about two hours, this entire series, and I'm going to stop there and because that's all I have for you for this particular thing. Hopefully that will give you a pretty good idea, or at least get you started on your Python journey if you, are, if you have already gone through at least part of your Java journey, which has nicer alliteration. So yeah, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you, if you like what you see and keep on coding. Take care.